Hello, my name is Megan. I'm one of the instructional assistants found in the Math Center. Today I'm going to be talking about a couple topics, in particular long division and synthetic division. Now before I actually get into that, I actually want to begin by discussing uh, long division in the manner that we learned in elementary school. I find going over this before we actually get into polynomial division helps a lot when it comes to knowing the steps about why we're doing what we're doing. So we're going to begin by rewriting our statement. Outside here we have our divisor and inside here we have our dividend. So I want to divide 4 into 135. I begin by looking at the first place here. As you can see, we have a 1. However, 4 does not divide into 1, so we need to expand our number. And we will instead look at 13. From here, we have to say, what can I divide into 13 without uh, going over that number? And the highest number we can work with is 12. 4 times 3 gives you 12. So we're going to put a 3 up here. And the 12 we'll put down here. Once we've written that down, we need to subtract the value that we found from the original problem. 13 minus 12 will give us 1. And with that, we need to bring down any remaining numbers. So we bring down this 5. Bringing the 5 down, our new number we need to divide by is 15. So we again take 4 and divide it into 15. And it seems like, again, the highest number we can divide by is 12. So placing a 3 up here, placing a 12 down here, we take the difference. That gives us our remainder of 3. Now, once you have your remainder, we can write out our final solution. And then to do that, we take the value that we found up here, the 33. And then over here, we'll make the improper fraction. The remainder is your numerator and your divisor is the denominator. And with that, we have our solution. So when we go into long division of polynomials, we'll be using the same approach, just with variables instead of only numbers. So this time around, we're going to divide x squared minus 11x plus three by x plus four. So let's go ahead and start that. We'll set it up the same way where you have your divisor on the outside and dividend on the inside. And we begin the same way. The only difference here is that we only want to compare the first term for both statements. So I'm going to look at this first term and this first term. I need to see what can I multiply into this term that will give me the other. So what can I multiply x by to get x squared? In this case, x times x equals x squared. And so that is going to be the first term of my divisor. So since x is what we're going to work with, I'm actually going to distribute that x into both parts. So x times x will give us x squared, as we saw earlier. And x times 4 will give you a positive 4x. Now, just like when we were doing the long division with numbers, we now need to subtract what we found from the original problem. That means both values need to be subtracted from the original. x squared minus x squared cancels out, leaving just 0. Negative 11x minus 4x will give us negative 15x. And then just like in the previous problem, anything left is brought down. So we're going to bring down this 3. All these remaining parts will again be divided by the divisor. So we now look at the first term of the original statement of x plus 4, and we're looking at our new 
uh, first term here to negative 15x. What must I multiply x by to get negative 15x? In this case, negative 15 times x will give you negative 15x. So that means when I write out my solution, I'll have negative 15 up here. And again, just like in the previous step with yellow, I'm going to multiply this value of negative 15 into both terms. So I'm gonna multiply it into the x and into the four. x times negative 15 is going to be negative 15x. Negative 15 times four will give me negative 60. And we will again take our values and we're going to subtract them from the problem. So I'm gonna subtract from here. But minusing a negative, that's the same thing as just saying we're adding a positive. So when you write these out, it might prove easier if you simply say that this is a plus 15x and a plus 60. Negative 15x plus 15x will cancel. Three plus 60 will give you 63. Oops. At this point, there's nothing we can multiply x by. That'll give us just 63. So this is actually our remainder. When we write out our final solution, we're going to place the x minus 15 that we found. And then that remainder of 63 is going to be written as a fraction. 63 is your numerator, and the x plus 4 is your denominator. Leaving this is our final solution. Let's try one more example like this, and then I want to move on to a new topic. There we go. So in this problem, we're going to set it up the same way. We have a three x minus one is your divisor. And over here, we have three x squared plus eight x minus nine is your dividend. So I will again look at the first term for both statements. And I need to see what can I multiply into each term first term, 3x, to get 3x squared. Well, 3x times x will give you 3x squared. And so x is what I need. Since x is your term, we're going to multiply that into both parts of the initial divisor. So 3x times x gave us 3x squared. And negative 1 times x will give you negative 1x. Just like in our previous problem, we now want to subtract our problem. And for your negative statement, that would be like adding. 3x squared minus 3x squared cancels. 8x plus 1x will give you 9x. And then we drag down that minus nine. And now I wanna look at again, my free x from the original problem. And I need to see what can I multiply it by in order to get the nine x. Well, free x times free will give you nine x. So that is going to be what I work with here. Placing the free over here, I now need to multiply free into my initial divisor. Three times three x will make a nine x. Three times negative one will make a negative three. And just like as we've been doing previously, we subtract our terms. Subtracting 9x and then subtracting negative 3 is like adding 3. 9x minus 9x will cancel. 
negative 9 plus 3 will make negative 6. Since we can no longer divide at this point, we have our final solution, which we can write as x plus 3 minus, because of our negative remainder, and then 6 over the divisor of 3x minus 1. So now that we've looked at long division, I'd like to just go over one more topic, synthetic division. We're going to use an example that we were using previously to show that your answer will not change, but some people find that this method is a bit easier to work with. So I'm just wanting to show you what that's like. There it is. So we're going back to our previous problem. The only difference here is we'll be solving it using synthetic division instead. So when we write with synthetic division, what we're actually going to do is begin by making a box. Now in this box, we're going to look at our divisor. And we're going to put the opposite number inside. So we're going to put a 4 right here, just like that. Additionally, we're going to look at each coefficient in our dividend. Here, when you don't see one, it's secretly a 1. Here, we've got a negative 11. And here, we've got a 3. So we're going to write all of those as part of our problem. So putting together our synthetic uh, problem, we have that four out here. We have a one out here, a negative 11, and a three. Once you have all of your coefficients like this, we make a bit of a division bar down here. And so we can begin with synthetic division. Your first step is always to bring down your first term. So this one, it's going to be brought down as a 1 again. Now this is where things change a bit. Whenever we're doing synthetic division, we take whatever's on the bottom. In this case, we had the 1. And we're going to multiply that 1 by our value here. So we're going to multiply 1 by negative 4. Negative 4 times 1 will give you negative 4. And then that value goes right over here. And now that we have our negative 4, we're going to combine the two terms that we have. We have negative 11. And we have negative 4. Negative 11 plus negative 4 makes negative 15. So we can write that down here. Once we're at this point, we begin the same process again. So we are going to again take the value in our box, the negative 4. And we're going to multiply it by whatever came down here. This time around, it's a negative 15. Negative 4 times negative 15 will make a positive 16. And with that positive 16, we follow the same process and place that over here. I mean, sorry, getting ahead of myself. That should be a 16. And then our final step is adding our two terms together. 3 plus 60 makes 63. At this point, once you reach the end of your box, we have completed synthetic division. We just need to convert our answer back into the form of a polynomial. And to do so, it's simply a matter of taking our values and treating them as the coefficient of our solution. We just start at one power fewer than what we began with. So as we can see in our original problem, our first term was x squared. So in our solution, the term is just going to be x to the first power. So this part here is going to become one 
1x. The second term, negative 15. And we keep going in descending order. Once you reach your final part, the remainder, just like in the previous examples where we worked with long division, we create a fraction. 63 in your numerator and your original divisor in the denominator, like so. Some people find they prefer synthetic division. They find it a bit faster, but it's really up to you which one you use in these cases. So that was long division. Now, if you have any of our questions or our concerns, you can always feel free to schedule a tutoring appointment with the Math Center. We'll be glad to go over any questions related to this or anything else in your classes. Thank you for watching.